Hello, and welcome to the Bober Academy football podcast, where we are continuing our series, Building Alignment, and with Nolan Kloss at a Midwest Movement. Um, this podcast, of course, is brought to you by the Bober Academy, where our mission is to train and develop superior linemen to dominate on the gridiron. And as a reminder, if you're listening to this podcast on whichever app you're using, be sure to click the subscribe button so you're notified of any of our new podcasts that come out. And if you're watching this on YouTube, click the little uh, subscribe button down there and also be sure to click the notification bell. And of course, if you're watching this on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever, Um, Be sure to comment, retweet, like, and we would love to hear back from you. So as I said, we are continuing our building alignment series, and this is kind of the last one. So next month, we'll get into the football season and the podcast will start bringing in coaches and players and some other people from around the area. We'll be talking football specifically, but we started this podcast um, or this series of building alignment with trying to help understand the physiology of offensive linemen in particular, and how their body functions as alignment. And I've learned a ton from this. It's really kind of actually changed my training and how I how I coach and train offensive linemen. Um, so we've gone all the way up the body, and now we're going to finish up with talking about kind of our head and neck area. And Nolan, of course, my trade is a chiropractor. So he right. sees a lot of people with neck and back kind of situations. And one of the things we talked about, because of course, Nolan, uh, Nolan played football in college at walk down at, um, where'd you play at again? Nebraska Wesleyan. Nebraska Wesleyan. I, I was going to say another W, but I don't want to bring that one up. The um, there you go. Um, so Nolan has, you know, a dozen or more years playing football and we talked about camp neck, right? Tell us what yeah. camp neck is, right? I, I always remember as the first, first week of practice, your neck just hurts so bad, right? Yeah. Tell me, tell me what, what your thoughts are on camp neck. So um, everybody's really familiar with uh, camp neck and uh, basically it's, it's getting used to your helmet, right? Mm. So uh, your head roughly weighs about eight pounds. Okay. Um, so I have a eight pound medicine ball right here. Um, and when you put a helmet on, it's roughly another two, three, maybe even more pounds. And, uh, and so basically all those muscles are just trying to get used to it. Um, and so kind of want to start some strategies on ways that you can make sure that it doesn't happen quite as much. Um, but if we think about, this is your head right here, um, and our neck. So say this is, um, this is the front. So if you had eight pounds and you had to hold it out in front of you, um, way out in front of you for, you know, long period of time, right? Basically at some point, the muscles here are going to start to get really tired and fatigued. So one of the ways that we can counteract that is by keeping that eight pounds or more, even during, uh, camp with the, the weight of our helmet over the top of our shoulders. And what I mean by that is, uh, basically a lot of what we do in our everyday life, we try to bring our head out in front of us and we just want to get that head stacked and get all the vertebrae stacked over the top of each other so that they can absorb the weight of gravity and the weight of that helmet. And basically that camp neck is these muscles back here having to control and hold our head out here for long periods of time. So the more we can be in this position, the the better that camp neck or that tension is um, gonna serve us. Um, so yeah, uh, trying to get that head back here. The other thing is, uh, yes, when we get into a football stance, especially alignment, we're gonna have to like crane our head up here. And so there's no way to not just be in that position um, while we're in our stance. But as soon as we get up out of that stance, I want our our spine stacked on top of each other um, and the head over our shoulders. Yeah, so a lot of the soreness really comes from that additional weight. Um, helmets right. are way better now than they were. I mean, I still have right. my helmets from the NFL, which were the highest technology then, and they are like bricks, man. The helmets today yeah. are way better. Um, but you know, one of the things I thought, I thought about, and when I do my summer school, we just got done last night. Um, 
I, I have the guys out there in helmet and shoulder pads. And one of the reasons I do that is to allow them to make the helmet the part a part of the game, which right. it is, um, but also to kind of get used to it. So the, these high schools that go around, and especially colleges and NFL teams do this too. When they start doing dirt camps this next week or two before they start training officially, they have more helmets. And it's like the coaches know, put the helmet on, at least get used to the weight before right. you start having it as part of, of the football plan, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, so where so wear your helmet, right? If you're sitting at yeah. home, wear your helmet. If you get if your coaches um, put them out there, but um, so let's talk about the function of a neck at, for football players, especially for linemen. And when I teach, I, I you know I just got done doing a module on Coach Tube, and I got the other one done and, on zone blocking and man blocking. And one of the things that I see when guys do drills, they're constantly putting their head back and out of the block, and I, I try to kind of eliminate that because I think you're actually in a more vulnerable position by, by really craning your neck back and out and avoiding it. I actually teach guys when they're run blocking to not use their helmet as a weapon, but to have it as part of your strike, right? And if, if done correctly, striking with your hat, your helmet in your hands, like your face mask provides a maximum force and allows you to come off the ball. Right. I never want them leading with their helmet, but it is going to be part of a football. You're going to have yeah. you know, contact with your head. And while we do want to minimize it to be effective, you can't be afraid to get, get your face in there, basically. So yeah. tell me about like the function of your neck as it pertains to football players, like especially for linemen. But every position has the helmet be involved at some point. Right. And uh, you're exactly right. Like when um, basically your neck is curved or we get that really curved back and then we get the head involved. There's just a ton of tension that we're going to put in that back part of that spine. So I always um, in teaching people uh, in athletics and everyday life is get our chin. It's not a tuck. It's like a, we always say, pretend like somebody ugly is trying to kiss you. <laughs> so, the lineman is trying to kiss you. Yeah. Pretend like, yeah, your, uh, your sister, your, uh, your neighbor on the line is trying to kiss you. So you want to get your head back. Then we can like get into those attack positions, just as long as we're not doing this, right? Mm -hmm. Our spine is really not meant to load, um, a lot of weight like this in this position, but it, when it's tucked, we're here, we're really strong. We're also getting a lot of our deep neck flexor muscles that are going to help support the spine rather than just the back muscles back here that already carry a lot of tension throughout our day. And uh, if we can just get more involvement by just getting that chin tucked a little bit and then we can lead with it, um, we're going to have more deep neck flexor muscles. Um, and, and we're seeing a lot in a, like those compression type blows to the head, right? Um, there's a lot of concussions and, um, neck and strains and sprains. And basically it's, it's not able to absorb the load between all those vertebrae. And that's because one of them is, you know, out of position and we get like that breakaway or mm -hmm. we're here and then all the load goes and it gets absorbed into one area rather than sharing it all the way down throughout the neck. Um, and so if, if we can just absorb all the way down through the spine, it's going to dissipate all those forces a little bit better. Yeah. Keep it more in line, just like with our knees, keep it in line yes. with our, our ankles and our hips and keeping our core in line with our hips and our shoulders. Um, seems to be a common theme here. And right. I, I have read some stuff with professionals who talk about when they do have an injury, they, they a lot of times admit they got outside of themselves. So it's the same right. thing with the neck. I wanted to, to deviate off a little bit and ask you a quick question. What do you think about when you see players wearing like neck rolls? Because I remember when I was in high school, you know, um, I always, Dave Remington was my hero coming from yeah. the South like me. And they had a big neck roll, man. You put that big foam thing up there and you just kind of think you look tougher. Um, what are your thoughts on neck rolls? You don't see them a lot anymore, but you do see them around a little bit. Yeah. And it, it really depends how people are using them. Um, I, I can see the advantage of having it, especially if somebody had like a whiplash type injury. Um, but like it almost can come, become a mechanism of further injury. Basically, like if if you have like a, I don't know, this, 
I got a marker. It's a real small neck roll, basically. But if it's right here, now it just becomes a fulcrum where our head is going to arch over. Mm. Um, and so I, I really don't like that. If you can't, if you don't know how to absorb a load like this and everything is just back like that, it's just going to like cut through and eat at that area of our spine. Um, this is kind of like an interesting thing. Like you could go around and look at people and see where the creases of their neck are. You'll see it like little folds in their neck. Um, and if there's like a, like a real permanent crease, think of it as like that paper clip. Like you are just bending through that, uh, that part of your spine a ton and eventually it becomes a crease in the skin. So if you can see that on somebody, you know that they're just eating away at that just level of their neck and we need some shared motion so you're gonna see me do this a ton yeah. um, it's just it's just something that we have to get better at as sharing the range of motion throughout the cervical spine rather than just in one area yeah yeah I, you know i bet you as a chiropractor you're um when you stand by people at the grocery store at the gas station you probably notice those kind of things right yeah and I, I'm not like a huge, um, like I'm not just walking around and be like, their posture is bad, their posture is bad. Yeah. Uh, but I can see like people, like the way that they move, I can, that's what I look at. So like if I see them at a grocery store and I see them like they're out here and then every time they turn their head and all that motion is just coming from like these joints. So it's not a shared motion through the rest of the joints. You know, the, um, the that's what I look at. Their potential customer coming up, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that that neck is so such a big deal. And I've even heard about guys who like are baseball, like pitchers, who keeping that neck stacked up will give them a lot more good rotational velocity and people who hit the ball. There's there's just in golfers, I mean, everything just kind of centers back on that center of your body and spine and staying right. inside. And I mean, we see it every day. Uh when people have neck complaints. We'll do muscle testing of their upper extremity and there will be weakness that they didn't even know like from side to side we do some neck treatments and that weakness will always improve um so that's just another like uh uh, uh sign that we need to make sure our neck is in good position especially as football players we don't want weakness anywhere yeah, and, and you know, I think we also are a disadvantage because so many people have that cell phone neck when they're constantly looking yeah. down. So that um that up. gets them in that habit, right? Put that put that cell phone up higher if you're gonna if you're gonna look at it. Um, yeah. uh, that's good stuff. So okay, so we we see how to use the neck properly, how to <coughs> excuse me, how to hold your head and kind of keep it stacked. Um, but what are some things that guys can be doing now? And then as they get into the season, you're going to have some neck soreness. I mean, it's just part of the game. What what can they do now to, to prepare? And then what can they do during the season um, as, as their neck becomes, you know, more sore? I always think that with every part of your body, you have to try to maintain that strength, flexibility, and everything about it all the way through the season. Because if you just ignore it by week four, five, six, or seven, all of a sudden that's when the problems show up and you're kind of trying to play catch up so what can guys do to prepare and stay on top of it as they go sure. into the season we've talked about this before um with when we were talking about shoulders and things like that whenever we train we want to have good positions of our spine if we're going to train bad positions and we're just uh we're just reinforcing uh poor movement patterns okay so anytime we're doing overhead lifts uh uh, shoulder shrugs, bicep curls, benching, all those things we want, we have to make sure that our head is in a stacked position. A lot of times we'll see people like when they start doing shoulder presses, they'll go like that. The more we can go here, the stronger those neck muscles are going to be and transfer on to the field. So that's like a, a very easy, simple step. Keep good, proper head position while we're in the, in the gym. And it's a good thing is they have mirrors in most places so you can see right. what they're doing, right? Yeah. And I mean, if you think about it, this is not like a very attractive position while you're working out. So, so stand uh, tall, right? Yep, stand tall. You want to grow your spine as long as possible. Um, the next thing, uh, if we're going to have pains and things like that during the season, 
um, or we even start getting tension in the back part of that neck, uh, we're going to do that exercise, what we talked about. Pretend like somebody ugly is kissing you. So you're going head back or like you're trying to slide your head off a countertop. And then once we get all the way back there, we're going to look up at the ceiling and you're going to feel a lot of tension through this back part of our neck. So we're just going to do repetitive motions. And really, um, everybody brushes their teeth every morning. This is similar um, hygiene for your spine. Uh, so think about it that way. The next thing, um, we want to be able to have rotational movement in our neck. Our joints don't just go back and they don't just go here. They turn and all that. So what we can do is just explore all the edge ranges of motion. So a, a drill that I like to do is we take our chin, we tuck it in, then we try to rotate it as far as we can one way. Look up, back around, and we're going nice and slow. Think about a pencil or a marker on the tip of your chin, and you're just trying to draw the biggest circle that you can on a marker board in front of you. So, so we could do that two times each way. And I think that of that as just that hygiene for the spine again. All right. And then um, this is a, an exercise that I think is helpful for not only building strength, but also pain. Um, so you're going to see a lot of people, um, like we've been talking about, get a lot of tension through that back part. So one of the things you can do is just laying flat on your back and tuck your chin just a little bit, then hover your head a half inch off of the table, just hovering it here. You should feel neck muscles working right around your esophagus or like in the front of your spine. And we can just hold for like 30 seconds. And as soon as we start fatiguing, you'll see people start doing this. Mm. Chin will start gravitating towards the ceiling. We want to keep that chin to back and hold right here. So we're, that's a really good way to work on the endurance of those neck muscles. And, um, and you talked about like not doing the machines where you put your weight on your neck. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. So um, and they're in every, people, every weight room, right? That You see them in there. Yeah. I, you know what? It's been years since I've seen one. Um, I, maybe I just haven't been in enough weight rooms, but my high school, we had one, mm -hmm. um, the machine where you do the neck like that. It's, it's just a, um, a exercise that's not really necessary because those muscles are already super strong going backwards. Um, so like we did this at football, uh, when I was at Wesleyan and I actually think it's a, a really good exercise, but just have like a buddy or uh, push your head just into the side of something and you're just holding strength. But one of the things like we talked about with all other lifting, we wanna make sure that head is in a good position before we start so that we can recruit all the muscles around the neck, not just the muscles in the back of our neck. Yeah, we used to, I remember our trainer at the, the Giants when he worked us out, he used to lay us down and have, have us hold us down and then we go all the way up and he pushed down and we just give negative resistance, yep. you know, just anything to, to strengthen, but also add the, the, um, the range of motion in there. Right. And I think that's when that soreness comes in, people just don't want to move their neck when really you got to get some motion in there to kind of get that soreness out of there or else it just gets worse and worse. Yeah. Um, and I, I do have to advocate like right now, like if you start experiencing pretty sharp points of pain in your neck during the football season, make sure you go get that checked out. Um, because when I was in high school and college, I, I didn't, I didn't do anything about it. It, it will further become a problem. I had stingers in my neck and, uh, eventually I had to take some time off and just, uh, wear a collar, um, just try to relax those muscles. Um, I don't think that's the proper way to treat it now, but, uh, like if you start experiencing like sharp bouts of pain, please, come in, see me. Um, we'll get you, 
we'll get you better quick. You answered the question. My last question I was going to answer uh, pretty well, but you did mention something that I, I experienced when I was playing, which is stinger. So if, if you get a stinger, would you say that that's a trigger for you to go see someone um, because you got a problem? Yeah, absolutely. Um, last year we had a, a football player um, who was a, a linebacker and he would uh, basically just get like total hand yeah. weakness and numbness. Um, and so he would also have like really sharp collarbone pain. Um, and we basically were doing some of these exercises that we're showing you. We got him back pretty quickly, but he waited until that stinger was like basically causing him to have tons of weakness and like he couldn't even lift his arm up. Um, and he had experienced that stinger like two weeks prior. So there's in football, there's a fine line between just toughing it out and actually make sure you go and seek help. Um, so it doesn't become a further problem. Yeah. I remember my, one of my years I kept on getting stingers and maybe it's cause I was on kickoff return, but um, it would be so bad. My, my whole arm would feel like it was on fire. Yep. Right. And um, you just kind of tough it out. We had trainers there that kind of took care of it. But I think even even what what you're doing is will probably have been better. But there's there's definitely more knowledge out there yeah. uh, these days. So um, if you go if you have anything like that, like a stinger or something like that, go see someone like Nolan. Um, again, Nolan, thanks for all your knowledge. We're going to have you back on during the season. Um, one of the yep. things we, we did last year, which was a kind of our tip of the week. Um, as injuries start popping up, as they kind of come in, you're going to start seeing more and more of these. We'll have Nolan there, probably little little shorter segments just to to get you right. But if if you do have anything going on with your body, anything with movement, of course he's a chiropractor by trade, but of course, but he's also a movement specialist. So yeah. Nolan Clausen, Mid Midwest Movement Elkhorn.com is where you're going to find him. He's located in Elkhorn, right there by Sam and Louis in Rick's Meats, um, next to the Godfather. Godfather's right there. So um, easy access. I, I know that he loves working with athletes, being a, an athlete himself. And um, Nolan's a great resource for us, but he can also be a great resource, resource for you guys. So I will leave his information wherever you're going to find this in the captions. You're going to see a link to his website and ways to contact him. So once again, Nolan, thanks so much for joining us today. Appreciate it. Love being on this. I'm excited yeah. for football. Football is pretty much back. Yeah, it is. Uh, NFL training camps are going. I yep. My high school kids, they finished up last night because they're going to school camps next week, right? They'll start doing conditioning, oh. and that means football is back in business, which is a great time of year. So, yep. um, everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, quickly, reminder, if you're listening to this on your podcast app, click subscribe. YouTube, subscribe and get click the notification bell and share, comment, retweet. We'd love to hear from you um, as we wrap up our Building Alignment Series for 2022. When we come back to you, we will be talking football, right? We'll have coaches, we'll have players, we'll have all kinds of good football people on here. So thanks for joining us on the Bober Academy Football Podcast and keep listening. You're going to find our stuff all over on social media and we appreciate you listening. So thank you so much and we will see you next time.